I started in 2017 and the people who I thought I would be working with all left within the space of a month and I thought that was really strange at the time. Didn't clock that maybe that was a red flag for a toxic workplace culture. I mean you never want to start a job and immediately hear that there's bullying and harassment in the workplace. People come in and expect you to know everything about um, new releases but also like classics and every sort of single stuff. Like, book on the shelf. Yeah. Like what you would reasonably expect a, a bookseller to be doing. On a retail worker. A retail doing. yeah, a retail <laughs> yeah. worker to be doing on their day to day. So I sent an email to uh, a representative from Rafu Lucas um, in late August. What I remember most vividly is this sense of like um, the blinders coming off, right? It's like I feel like there's a sense of being gaslit <laughs> by your management, by your workplace for so long that suddenly when you're stating your issues to someone uh, and I'm just kind of laying it out and having someone respond to you, oh, that sounds really messed up. Like that sound, that does not sound normal at all. It was a relief. It was a huge relief. When people first started joining the union, I think a lot of the conversations that were happening about unionizing in those early days were happening on the shop floor, just quietly, um, in quiet moments. I remember learning a whole new vocabulary for a start. <laughs> um, even just like what what are claims, what kinds of things can we ask for in an agreement and what should we ask for, what do we prioritise, all that kind of thing. Having people join the union in a very real way and having like so many people like so open to it and so ready to to join and like take up some sort of fight um, with each other was like so exciting. I think my first union meeting which was on Zoom by that point I had a whole notebook of new words because <laughs> I didn't think I'd remember um, what everything meant. It was not an under the table thing we were doing it was legitimate we have a right to unionize mm. this is all above board. When we first approached Better Red for Dead and asked them to bargain they initially agreed but then later on changed their mind. We realised we were going to have to um, collect a petition of the majority of workers in the store and have them appoint Rafu as the bargaining representative in order to force Better Red Than Dead to meet with us just to start the bargaining process. We were trying to reach an agreement that would work for workers but of course would also work for the business and the only way to do that would be to, um, through communication, at bargaining meetings to reach some kind of compromise um, and I feel like when they were unwilling to bargain again and again it forced us into this, this position. I remember that the Zoom sort of only had a certain amount of people allowed within the, mm. the Zoom and then it was like people could watch it on, on the live stream as well and I remember like within the first um, 10 minutes like it maxed out like and that was such an amazing feeling. One of the first times that we realised on that scale, what we were doing was so much bigger than mm. our workplace. Mm. Because these are people from other unions, from other workplaces with their struggles, and because of their values, they cared about what we were doing because it meant better things for everyone. Mm. And I think the more we went on, the more we realised how much what we were doing ramified more broadly than just our, our little shop. Uh, the MUA Sydney branch will be alongside Raf Wu and your rank and file all the way through these these battles and it takes courage what you workers have done real courage it was, it was really special to have like-minded people tell us like actually we're doing a good thing retail workers haven't gone out as far as i can remember a group of retail workers going out on a protected action or going on strike tonight as well the CFMEU construction division in new south wales will fully support all workers not just at this bookshop but in the retail sector that go out and put their hand up to take on the company they work for to get their rights. It really meant a lot to us um, and kind of gave us that energy that we needed to keep going. It was really great. Yeah, like I felt like that that real sense of solidarity mm. like yeah. was so real in that moment. Within this May 1 meeting, Anwen Crawford um, basically like launched the author's open letter. Here this evening, it's a great honour to be here and I'm so excited to see nearly 100 people here. No matter where we work or what we do, everyone deserves to live comfortably and share in the immense wealth of our society. Solidarity, your fight is our fight. 
the other thing that was launched at the at the forum was a welfare fund for all of us. Part of the purpose of that was also to educate people and also ask people to donate if they were able to. To let people support us um, while we're taking industrial action um, and um, to make up for some of those lost wages. Yeah, I was so scared. Yeah. I was like, if I get locked out, which happened, mm. but only lasted for like 24 hours. Anyway, mm. it's like, I, how am I going to be able to like live my life? I remember mm. Josh saying, we don't want you guys living on instant noodles. And I was just <laughs> like, but that's just what's going to have to happen, Josh. Yeah. Like, We received a lot more money than I was expecting for that. I thought maybe we'd make a few hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or something maybe like, like that. Maybe like a gift card. I think there was already this fear because it was industrial action was a new experience for us but it was a new experience for the sector like it hadn't mm. like happened like 50 years or something except for i think it was meat it was meat workers at calls yeah. yeah um so it was this huge undertaking and it was scary because it, you know just we didn't know what was going to happen it was really moving that people were just so willing to financially back us like mm. the solidarity was incredible protected industrial action is basically um, the removal of some sort of work. It's really hard to go into a job that you care about um, and want to do a good job at and say, actually, no, I'm not going to be performing these tasks. There was a huge change when we implemented industrial action, like a real, like, palpable change in their behaviour, their, their added, I mean, attitudes towards us, but also just their attitude towards bargaining in general. We noticed a, a, a marked difference after we undertook industrial action. It was just like a series of events where management were constantly, like, we got defamation letters, we got, you know, like, them refusing to bargain and then coming to the bargaining table then saying they weren't ever going to happen again like there was like this real sense of them having all the power the day before that it was due to be instated we received the stand down letters as a kind of last ditch effort from the employer to get us to change our mind so we implemented our bans on web orders and returns um and really quickly um Better Ed and then came to the bargaining table. We had a bargaining meeting that was really productive. All of a sudden, we were able to find agreement on almost all of the issues that were important to us. That night, um, Josh explained what had been offered to us. We discussed it at length. There were a couple of issues that were outstanding that we believed were important enough that we wanted to make sure um, they were agreed to before we accepted this offer. Um, Josh called our employer late at night um, and a few minutes later came back to the Zoom room and said, yeah, we've got a deal, that's all agreed to. Um, it was big celebratory energy, everyone was very excited and proud of what we've been able to achieve. Um, yeah. After pestering management saying, hi, like, why are you stalling? What's going on? Um, they reneged on the agreement uh, and they decided that there are a number of very central claims that they no longer, um, no longer agreed to. Well, we held a rally. We gathered not directly in front of the store, but on the footpath close by. In recent weeks, uh, through the employer's lawyers, it's come clear that they are no longer holding to their agreed position. And we had some people speaking, ex-employees who spoke about their experience and explained to the broader public why we were doing what we were doing. My name's Emma and I've worked at Better Red Than Dead for three and a half years Woo! and I've been part of Rap Week since August 2020 when our campaign started. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> We have always been willing to negotiate, but this is completely outrageous and we will not be conceding on these fronts. Very real public pressure, I think, um, coupled with our industrial action, just 
meant that they yeah. sort of had very, very little choice um, but to yeah. concede to our demands. All work is to be classified at least at retail employee level three following probationary periods. Full restoration of 100% penalty for work on Sunday. Abolition of junior rates following probationary periods. Converted part-time workers to be paid a base rate of $1 per hour more than the award minimum with penalty and other rates on top. Full suite of health and safety clauses, policies and rights detailed in the agreement. 20 days paid domestic violence leave for those experiencing or supporting those experiencing domestic and family violence. 26 weeks paid parental leave and a number of other important outcomes. <laughs> I think that we can already see the effects of this campaign on, you know, the readings campaign, like showing that it can be done. It can be done in a sector that is like overwhelmingly young people um, who are employed in casual positions. Um, it can be done, um, you know, like in small to medium sized businesses. Um, it doesn't have to be these massive chains. I think before that point, you know, my expectation was that if I like, um, like if there was a, a problem at a workplace, like the solution was to, um, it's just to leave and you just kind of continually move on and on and on and try and find like a greener pasture. But that actually had the capacity to like build something better here and now. Um, mm -hmm. And that was, I think the, yeah, my main takeaway from the whole thing is that like we can, we can change our circumstances right here, right now. Mm -hmm.